Hello and welcome back to So Forth and So On. I'm Miss Henderson and today we are going to make a rain poncho. Uh, April is upon us and April showers bring May flowers. So I figured it would be nice for us to make a rain poncho just in case we get caught in the rain. And they're very, very simple and easy to make. As a matter of fact, uh, what we're going to use today to make our rain poncho is a Dollar Tree plastic tablecloth. You can also use a shower curtain, but I figured, um, well I have made it with a shower curtain. As, as a matter of fact, the one in the thumbnail is from a shower curtain from Dollar Tree. However, I decided I wanted to try to make one with a um, a tablecloth. You can use the round tablecloth or the uh, rectangular one. So, if you want the you know round one, so you have the round at the bottom of your coat, and I thought that would be a cute look. But today we're going to use a rectangular uh, tablecloth. And the thing about tablecloths too is they are already decorated and dressed up so you can get a tablecloth for any season and make your rain poncho. Now, you can do this a couple of ways. You can, if you're going to make a lot of them, I suggest you get you a large sheet of paper or a poster board or something like that and just make a pattern. Otherwise, you can just cut it straight on the um, tablecloth. So now, the tablecloth comes out the package and you want to have it the long way, all the way extended out and then fold that in half. So now I have it in half and the, bo the bottom, the border is my bottom there. So I hope you can see it. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. Make sure it's just as straight and even and you know, get it, get it together. And it may take a little bit of time. You have to be patient with projects and so forth. But get it nice and straight. Now this is the part where you determine whether you want to just go ahead and cut it onto your fabric or if you want to make a pattern. So we lay it out here on the table, on the cutting table, and just make sure everything, all the wrinkles and crinkles and everything out. It'll take time to do that. As a matter of fact, my uh, students on Thursday, this past Thursday, this is the project they started we started. So if you want to make a pattern just make sure that your paper is as long as the fabric. The main part you need because you can always lengthen or shorten the main part is that you just want to have the neckline correct. So now on one side of the fold you'll have two open ends and then a fold. You don't want to bother that side yet. The other side will be two folds. Okay? And I'm just going to give you an idea how to use this paper and then I'm not going to use the pattern anymore. And you just need it for the neckline. And so I'm going to use my tool. And if you want you can lay pattern weights on there to keep everything straight. But this project is such a simple product project you don't really need them. So you want to take your ruler and from that edge you want to come in about two inches. And I start small because we can always increase but it's difficult to to decrease. So I'm coming in two inches there and then I want to go along long ways and go two inches and then we want to make these meet. Now I'll use a curved ruler, a French curve 
and make sure that these two lines that I put they meet and then draw that curve right there okay and so that gives me an opening for a neckline and to place uh, add the hood a little bit later and any extra fabric and you will have some extra fabric make sure you save that for your hood okay So now we can just go ahead and cut that portion off. Okay. We won't be needing that. And so that's pretty much your pattern. And so you really don't need the pattern, but it's nice to know that you can make a pattern. <laughs> so here, when we open, we'll have our neckline right there. But now, on this side where this fold is, We want to come down about nine inches, and that's just so we can mark a place for our arm. Okay. And let's see what the measurement is across here for you. Seventeen. So now from this edge where we cut the neckline to here is 17. And so what we want to do, we mark that. Seventeen. And then we come over just one more inch for 18. So we want to make it 18 and then we want to come down to 9 okay alrighty and so this line is going to go all the way to the bottom and just make sure we're 18 all the way down And one of the easiest way to do this is to put a little notch in your one inch and come down all the way down and then connect your lines. Okay? And this tear this tears or cuts pretty easily, so you don't have to worry about it uh, being a difficult. You're not really cutting very much at all. And we're going to go all the way down. See, it's just like butter. And you can find something on the fabric if it's a printed fabric to help you keep your line straight. Okay, and just put this over to the side because that's what we're going to use for our hood. All right. Now back to our 9 inches, we're going to come down 9 inches and just put a little snip, just a snip. Don't cut into the fabric, You just it's just a marker. And if you don't want to snip, you can use your chalk and make a mark there, but you would have to make it on all four pieces. Okay, so now we are very close to being done. We want to open our fabric like this and so now you have a big rectangle with a scoop okay turn your fabric right sides together pretty sides touching And you 
can do that initially if you want to. But just, you know, right out the package, you just take it as it is and work with it. Okay, so now one thing about this fabric <laughs> is that you don't want to use pins. You want to use clips. But if you only have pins, then just be very careful and very scarce with them. And so we're going to sew across the shoulder on each side. And then starting from that little, make sure your notches that you clipped in there match up. And starting just below that, you want to sew all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so you're going to do both shoulders. Then you're not going to do anything in this first area from the shoulder, but that 9 inch mark, start there and sew all the way down to the bottom. And a good thing too is you don't even have to hem this uh, item. And the shower curtain has the extra at the end of it. That's a really nice reinforcement. So I mean it's a win-win. When you're practicing something like this, why not use the dollar store item and then when you get good at it, material for... Um, raincoats uh, you use either a vinyl or an oil cloth vinyl is like eight nine dollars a yard and oil cloth is twenty four twenty five dollars a yard on sale so rather than you know practice on that material or fabric try it out on the shower curtain or a plastic tablecloth or anything like that and then when you're really good at it then you can buy the more expensive a fabric to make your poncho or even a raincoat. Now after we get the the coat or the body part of the rain poncho cut we want to go ahead and cut the hood portion and you can take a hoodie that you have and use it as a pattern and just uh, trace around it onto the what's left over of your fabric. Say for instance uh, and you want to use the folded side of your fabric, but if you don't have folded, since we're going to sew it anyway, no worries. But you will take your pattern or your hoodie, your existing hoodie, and fold it nice and neat and lay it flat. And then just trace around it or cut around it, ensuring that you have that piece together there and you'd end up with something like this. And then you want to make sure that it is turned right sides together, pretty sides facing. And again, you want to clip and not pin if possible. And everything can be adjusted once you get started. So I'm going to use clips to hold the hoodie part together, the hood so I'll know where to sew. And for right now, we're just sewing just across that top curve because I've cut it on the, on the fold so I don't have to sew it here. So I'm just sewing along this part here, leaving the front open because that's where our face is going to come out. And leaving this open, we're going to sew this part to the coat. So we're, we're almost there. So I'm at the sewing machine and I have the coat part clipped together and I'm using a contrasting thread but of course you would use a matching thread if, if that's what you want to do. And I'm just going to go start at the shoulders. I'm using a straight stitch and I am going to make the stitch, I'm, I'm using it at a three to make it a little bit longer uh, stitch. And I'm using a ballpoint needle. Um, you could probably use a universal or regular needle, but I, I figured because it's plastic, uh, the ballpoint needle would do better and not leave large holes in it. After all, it is a raincoat, right? So I'm going to just sew along the shoulders and down the sides, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to use about a half inch seam allowance, so I think that's important to know. The half inch seam allowance is good. 
So once you're done sewing down the sides, you can turn it right side out. It's like a hospital gown a little bit. And you will sew your hood part down that seam and turn it right side out. Now what you want to do is find the center of your coat, which is here, and determine which side you're going to use the front or the back, because at this point, either goes. And you're going to match the center of your hood, the center back of your hood, with the center back of your poncho, and you're going to clip that all the way around. So match up the center and then use clips to clip that hood all the way around. Now you'll find that the hood is a little bit larger than the neckline opening. That's where you want to clip a little bit more to make that opening a little larger. That's all you have to do. Be very careful and only clip as much as you need. go around and you can use as many or as few clips as you are comfortable with I'm gonna use a lot <laughs> this time so this is an experiment for me too that's what being creative is all about trying new things seeing if this works your what if moments and again being frugal with our resources because things are super expensive nowadays and so we want to be responsible crafters responsible with our resources and responsible with the environment as well. Okay. So once you connect or clip the hood to the poncho, you'll have something like that. And I'm just going to snip just a little bit. Just a little. I always lose my scissors. I think I'm going to put them on a lanyard. <laughs> well, we'll figure out something. Okay. So I clipped just a little so that I would have more room for the hood to extend a little bit. And to get it over my head. Okay. So once you get it clipped, and pinned or, cl or clipped all the way around, then you want to begin sewing at one end, um, back stitching, and then sewing on around, and take it all the way around to the other side, and you will be done. Very simple project. And keep in mind, too, that if you purchase the plain shower curtains, you can use either permanent markers or vinyl stickers to decorate your poncho if you choose to. Lots of things to experiment with and to try to make your own design. Okay, and so we're all done with our poncho. You can cut it longer here to have a little bit of an opening here. Here's the hood here. The hood doesn't fit over my big bun here but and this is a child size so but here's our hood functional fully functional unless you have a big bun <laughs> and there's just so much you can do take your time and make this project I stood up on a step stool to see to show you and you can trim the border so that it's not as wide you may want a smaller border or no border at all. It's, up, it's really up to you how you style and fashion your poncho. 
you can make it smaller you can cut it down the front and put snaps and make it into a poncho like that so you're only limited by your imagination and your creativity have fun i hope you enjoy making your uh, ponchos you can have a different poncho for different occasions different holidays an easter poncho whatever you want to make the possibilities are endless. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you. Please remember to like and subscribe and share my video. I'd appreciate it. And I'd like to hear from you in the comments. Let me know if you think you can make it or if you do make it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And until we speak again, may love bring you to your feet and show you how to dream again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.